Um, LeBron's camp is reported by several outlets is that he had no involvement in the hiring of J.J. Redick. The Athletic reports that the Lakers prioritized Anthony Davis's input into the hiring of a new coach. So Keyshawn, do you believe LeBron had nothing to do with the hiring of J.J. Redick and that Anthony Davis had a whole lot to do with it? What's nothing to do with though, Skip? Like, like, help me understand what nothing to do. Put it in context for me. Not involved. I, I don't know. That, that he said nothing to nobody about anything. I, he stayed out of it. I can believe that he stayed out of it. I really can. But the nothing at all, no, I don't believe. Because it's just as simple as this. Hey, I like J.J. He works really good with me on my podcast that I've got to know him over the years. And that's it. That's all he needs to say. He's LeBron James. He doesn't need to continue to keep meeting with Rob Polinka in 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 Jeannie Bus and Linda. Ra he doesn't need to do any of that. All he does is says, "Hey, he's a good guy. I like him," and they go, "Okay," and that that's it. That's all he needs to do. Hmm. He doesn't have to be in the meetings and calling him. Did you hire him yet? They already know. Just a few little soft words. I like him. He's a nice guy. And a certain look on his face. And they'll make the decision. Now, Anthony Davis, on the other hand, he could go in and have a conversation about what what's our plans here because he has a longer option on his... I mean, a couple more years plus his option. And he essentially, when LeBron is gone, he'll be... Three years from now, he'll be older. Right? He'll be a little bit older. But as Rachel mentioned in the last segment... 30-plus years old really isn't that old in the NBA anymore. We're not talking about 39. So his influence is probably a little stronger, right, which is, hey, LeBron likes him. I like him too. And that's pretty much it. And then they just pin it on Anthony Davis, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with LeBron James saying, I like J.J. Redick as our coach. There's nothing wrong with it because if it goes wrong, we going to pin it on LeBron any damn way. <laughs> regardless. No, regardless. And if it goes right, guess what we going to say? Man, LeBron is a great general manager. <laughs> no matter what the case is, he can't win in this situation at all because he's LeBron James. I don't know why they, people have to put out there that he has had no influence or conversation, which is a damn lie. You know damn well they had a conversation with LeBron James about who they going to hire as a coach. He wasn't sitting at Kendrick Lamar's concert not knowing that J.J. Reddick wasn't getting ready to be hired. Oh, yeah. Look, look, if you look at those reports, you're absolutely right. The headline is he wasn't involved. But the second sentence after that in every single one is clarifying he wasn't involved in talking to the Lakers front office directly. No. And I actually do, I, I do believe that that's true. I, that's I do true. believe that's that true. he, I do believe that he didn't go in and say anything to Jeannie or to Rob Kulinka. But being involved can come in a lot of different ways. Exactly. And here is what we know. We know that when Dan Hurley was a candidate for the job, he and LeBron started exchanging text messages. In fact, Dan was kind of excited to talk about it when he spoke to Colin Cowherd. He's like, I'm, LeBron's texting me all of a sudden. And he described how LeBron was talking to him about the team, about what they might do on the court, specifics, things about how the next season would go. You're going to tell me if he's doing that with Dan Hurley? who he clearly had never texted before, given Dan's reaction, mm. that he isn't also doing that with J.J. Redick, who he's had a podcast with and I'm sure texts all the time? Come on. That is what's impossible to me. So I buy that he didn't talk to the front office. Absolutely. Because he kind of didn't need to. Don't need and to. And I do buy that he was involved because I think there's other ways to get involved. Now, that being said, I think the smartest thing the Lakers have done in this entire coaching search, which has been very uneven, is prioritize Anthony Davis. They had Anthony talk to JJ on the phone before they officially made the hire. And look at Anthony Davis. It's not just that he's going to be around longer. I really believe that Anthony Davis has not reached his true potential yet. He is a nine-time All-Star. He is obviously super accomplished. He will go down. He's got a championship. He'll go down in history as a great player. But I think he has a higher ceiling than we've seen so far. And I think JJ Redick will be an excellent X's and O's analytical coach who can put him in those situations mm. and especially late in games I think that under JJ we will see more out of Anthony Davis which has to happen mm. if you're a Lakers fan because LeBron is getting older and the best thing for the Lakers is if AD becomes the true number one option on this team so mm. I think that has been the smartest thing they've done 
I don't buy LeBron wasn't involved, but I, I do I do buy that he it's probably didn't simple, talk to the front I office. like you. Yeah. Why do and I look, need to have a conversation? And, and look, if he didn't like JJ, that met as head coach, even if he was like, you know, Rich Paul said at one point, just because he has a podcast for him, with him doesn't mean he wants him to be a head coach. Yeah, but he never yeah, signaled <laughs> to the front office that he didn't want him. Exactly. So, so that's saying yes. So, question. Do you think J.J. Redick would be the new head coach of the Lakers if he didn't have a podcast with LeBron James? I do not. I do. I'm with you. I do I, not. I think that was crucial to all of the above. But not that, you no, could, no. Okay, so let me back this up. Let me let me. Oh, re- so you're saying the other way? Let me no. Let me rephrase yeah. this. The podcast has nothing to do with him being hired as the Lakers head coach. What the podcast has done is opened up our eyes to see their relationship. That, that's it. But it didn't have to happen that way because if LeBron James said, hey, i like Rachel Nichols to be our head coach because... That would be inspired, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we you know hang out together. I think they're going to hire who LeBron says... Somebody say missed hi- a bet on They're going to hire who LeBron says yeah. hire. Mm-hmm. Period. They're not yeah. going to go against him. Okay, so to your point... He's LeBron bleeping James. He's the leading scorer in the history of this game. He's earned the right to at least sign off on if you get to the finish line and, and you say, we're about to, are you okay with this? I mean, yeah. But they're not even going to go down that road to get to the finish line mm-hmm. without discussing it. You, you have it. to. You, you know? You, 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 just, you, they're not. You'd be insane if you didn't. <laughs> and, and yet, to your first point about... You know, a con- you know, a little comment here or there. You know, I, kind of, I like him, that, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Okay, that's classic what Brian Windhorst has called from the start, mm-hmm. LeBron's passive-aggressive sort of leadership, yep. where you just kind of say, well, yeah, I, I, I would. Skip. It would be, it'd be okay. You know, I'd like him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, right? That's the way it happens in life in general. No, Think about it. I, I, I will say that that is his leadership style. It doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't mean that it's bad. There no, are, it's there great. Are, there are people who do better when they're not out front making the decisions. Yes. And he is always more of the pulling strings guy, sort of the tweets to the, the front office around the trade deadline, Absolutely. all of that stuff. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong but with that. But there's no doubt that that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. simply s- drop a few little breadcrubs yeah. with a smile, and you say, if you're smart enough, you'll pick it up. Okay. That's it. Is LeBron a little beaten up over the fact that, to your point, everything that goes wrong, they say, well, it's, it's, it's your fault. So did he want a little bit of plausible deniability here where he could at least say, well, d- don't, don't blame me because it blew up in everybody's face? And, and yet, I, I wish, and maybe now that it's done, I, I, the team needs him to publicly embrace J.J. now to, to come full force with with lots of big quotes about how this will work. I, they, no, they don't, do. they don't need it right now. Yeah. They need it when it starts to work. Well, but, but pretty because soon if you, it, if you do bless it, him. If you do it now, Skip, and it does not work, guess what happens? He now gets all of the negativity because he will have come out and yeah, blessed it. Yeah, but you already it. said he'd get it no, anyway. No, but, 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 but he doesn't see it that way. He yeah. wants to, as you said, Plaza Madonna, he yeah. wants to sit back yeah. and see it unfold. Once it unfolds, then he, you, you'll come out and, hey, everything's all good. Well, it's going to come up before then, though, Keyshawn, because first of all, I don't expect him to publicly sign off on him right now because no. LeBron is holding his leverage that he might not be with this team no, that's not here. Well, By that the way, ain't we'll talk about that. Yes, I agree will. with you. But okay. it's still something the Lakers front office has to worry about. And then we get to July 5th. That is the start of Team USA training camp. And that is going to be interesting because LeBron will be in front of a bunch of microphones and then we'll know what he really Okay, thinks. do you think LeBron will show up at JJ's introductory press conference here in LA? Yeah. I don't yeah, they always like... they always show up. I've seen okay. them always go to the head coach's Would press he conferences. Would he speak? What do you he, think? He doesn't normally speak. No, but they always show up though. He always like cuz he's there working out and stuff like that. Yeah, he I I almost feel a guarantee that he will be at the press conference. Okay. I don't know. You know. It's before he officially read out or out. Oh, no, that's no. another like I, it's, yeah. it's, oh, it is before. <laughs> I mean, you expect them to intro- formally introduce JJ Reddick before the draft, and the draft is before LeBron's opt out. So yeah. I just okay, good point. Well, that's true too. I didn't think about okay, that. Okay, now back to Anthony Davis. This is just me from a distance, and you know I'm much better. But I'm I'm just sort of reading tea leaves along the trail. 
To me, Anthony is more of a follower than a leader, and he looks up to LeBron the way very few players.